In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take the uh, privilege of sitting and chatting this evening rather than standing up and orating from behind. I figured as long as the bishop is normally seated and I'm old enough to be his father <laughs> and I'm even older than the Pope that I could sit too. <laughs> By way of preference, I'm going to, uh, Father Aaron left out the first two words of the uh, reading, but uh, it, it's, it, it begins having said this, and I'm going to tell you what he said. Uh, this is just after the foot washing at the uh, Last Supper. And Jesus said, you have called me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If then the Lord, if I, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, then you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you might copy what I have done for you. And that copy was to minister as a servant. I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master, and no master is greater, no messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you have behaved accordingly. I'm not speaking to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But scripture, what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I sent welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. And then it begins, having said this. Having said this. Having said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you in truth. One of you, one of you is going to betray me. Now, Jesus was tempted in spirit for two reasons. One is pretty obvious. How would any of us feel to be betrayed by somebody totally and close to us, somebody that we trusted, somebody that we loved? Uh, Judas was a trusted member of Jesus' inner circle. Uh, he was so trusted that he was entrusted with the treasury <laughs> that they had, the little income that they had gathered, things that they used just to subsist. They all knew, including Judas, that uh, it was dangerous for them to be there. They all knew that the religious authorities were looking to uh, find Jesus so that they might arrest him and so they might bring him to trial and so they might condemn him to death. And so Jesus, Judas, was prepared that night to lead these authorities to where Jesus was. 
and knowledge had come to Jesus that one of his disciples didn't truly accept him for who he was. And he was prepared that very night to betray him. Now, why did Judas do that? There's speculation about that. One of the uh, speculations is that uh, Jesus didn't really mean to betray him, that his intention was to force Jesus' hand to become the savior that Jesus, Judas expected him to be, that he would give up all of this humble stuff and uh, become the political leader that would free the Israelites from the domination of the Roman Empire. And there is some justification for that assumption. Because we will remember what happened with Judas after that failed to happen. He took the 30 pieces of silver that he had gleaned and for, from them, threw them back at them, and in either desperation or guilt, went out and hanged himself. Another speculation is that he was simply a money grubber. You know, as one says that uh, thought he used to steal from the common amount that they had, and that the uh, lure of being paid for information that he had that they wanted was enough to make him do that. No, I'm very grateful that I'm not required to judge which one is right, but um, uh, either one of them could be true. The end result was the same. And that leads us to the second reason why Jesus, Jesus, Jesus was troubled. Because he knew that that betrayal was going to set in motion the events that would culminate in his agonizing death upon the cross. And strangely enough, after Jesus sent Judas out to do what he was going to do, Jesus' deme demeanor changed dramatically. No longer focused on the betrayal, like a warrior going forth into battle, he set his faith face on the mission that he was there to accomplish. Now, he said, now the Son of Man has been glorified. It's all set in motion. I can't stop it. It's moving on. Judas had gone out into the night, but Jesus was set on the path to defeat the power of darkness. And along that path, he was going to face a lot of misery. Abandonment. Even Peter denied even knowing him. Ridicule, rejection, slaps, spitting, mockery. It could hardly have felt like the road to glory. If that's what it was. It was for Jesus, and through him, it is for us. In our epistle reading from Corinthians yesterday, St. Paul is quoted as saying, for the message of the cross is foolishness 
to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen.